Chase Yaki with the Blue Fucha. I'm about to review Rambo Last Blood, but why am I dressed like this? Well, I saw Rambo Last Blood Thursday night, like a midnight show, and with a decent amount of people actually in the theater. And I'm surprised more people were in downtown, downtown Alby, whatever it's called. Anyway, and this morning I went golfing, and that's why I'm wearing all this stuff. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to wear this attire, but it's more like risky business attire. But anyway, Rambo Last Blood, what it's about, it's pretty simple. After the fourth movie, Rambo has his own ranch in Arizona. He kind of adopts a family, if you want to put it that way, has a niece and her grandmother. The niece wants to go see who her dad is in Mexico. She goes down there, but her friend in Mexico totally kind of disowns her or kind of sells her to a drug trafficking uh, people. And then while down there, Rambo's trying to go saving her. Doesn't go as planned. He has to come back up. And the drug trafficker had to come back up to Arizona and try to get revenge on Rambo. So that's a pretty simple story. Uh, it's a violent movie. I don't know what people are expecting. It's a Rambo movie. Have you not seen First Blood, First Blood Plus 2? Rambo 3, Rambo just read regularly, and Rambo Last Blood. So what do you expect from this movie? I mean, I three things. I would say there are a couple flaws. It drags a little bit in the second half, but this one, they're actually trying to tell a story. This one, it's kind of like first blood, if I want to put it that way, of like, why is he doing what he's doing? His emotional side of what he's actually, he's caring for these people, so he want they want to show this side of the story. Two, I'll be morbid. I wanted more killing. I know in the fourth one, there was like over 200 murders. This one, I would say about 20, 25 people actually get murdered in this movie. I wanted more. I won't lie. Maybe I'm just morbid. And number three, I wanted the killing to go down longer. I know it's like the last third act, so it's about 20 minutes of killing. But I wanted that 20 minutes to be like 40 minutes, more people, more drawn out. Because this one's like, kill, 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 kill. Like, Rambo's just like, screw you, screw you, screw you. Like, it's not even a challenge for Rambo to kill these people at all. Also, the score. Tower Bates, I think, is the one who did this uh, score. I could be completely wrong. I know that Tower Bates sounds familiar. I don't have a phone with me. But it's basically the same guy that did, like, the Rambo and Rambo 2. So, it's like, you hear the score that was in the other movies. And the cinematography also looks good. You get the scope of Mexico. You get the scope of the land Rambo lives on in Arizona. But it's a Rambo movie, and I loved it. I love the killing, I love the story, and I love what the movie was actually trying to portray with what's happening in the real world. I know there's a lot of critics out there, which I might do another video about, saying why I think Rotten Tomatoes slash critics got this movie wrong, is there is sex trafficking in Mexico. Like It's actually an epidemic. I can look up news articles. There are people who get thrown in acid. There is. It's a worldwide epidemic, and it is happening at our border. So what is Rambo going to do? Rambo, he lives in Arizona. He's going to fly to, I don't know another country in Africa or Europe or Asia and like oh no we got to get that no it's simplistic Arizona's on the border of Mexico there is a serious problem of kidnappings have you not seen man on fire isn't that the story of kidnapping anyway it's happened in 2003 with really Scott so Rambo's doing the same thing I mean so what's the whole problem oh because Trump the president well anyway screw that this movie okay and also I'm in California right now in the movie theater, I was the minority being the white guy in the theater. Most of the people in the me theater were Mexican or Hispanic origins that were from South America, you know, Mexico, Colombia, and everything like that, Argentina. And then they were basically saying, oh, yeah, F that, you know, and they were saying the words to the bad guys that were Mexican that were literally pumping these girls with heroin, pumping these girls up, selling these girls out, and just ruining their lives. And the dad saying, like, you're worthless to me and stuff like that. So with these white critics... For some reason, I have to defend what's going on in this movie. You don't. It's a worldwide issue that normal people know about. And when normal people see a bad guy, it's a bad guy. So I don't know what's going on with these critics. I've got to read. I'm going to literally do a video and read a lot of these reviews and see why the critics are hating this movie. Because it's weird. I check, you know, your phone. And when I wake up, there's a lot of Google articles. And a lot of the Google articles that come in basically saying Rambo is a Trump area fantasy or Trumpian fantasy. Like, that's the only articles Google gives me about how Rambo bashes the Trump legacy. It's like, how about you give me just normal reviews of people that don't take political aspects into a movie? Because this movie doesn't have to be political. It really doesn't. A girl is from Mexico. Her dad is in Mexico. She wants to find her dad in Mexico. Her friend sells her out to these bad guys who does sex trafficking. And sex trafficking is a worldwide issue. It's in Thailand movies. It's in Indonesian movies. It's in movies that are done a million times. So I don't know why this one is special. Why the critics want to ooh about it. But anyway, Rambo. I love this movie. Of course, it does. it's a little slow. But they're trying to sh tell you a story. I wish there was more killing. And I wish it lasted longer for the killing. But yeah. Anyway. White Claws. There are no laws. So. 
I've been on those a little bit. Man, the White Claw's pretty good. But Rambo, Last Blood, will receive a 4.5 out of 5 blue futons. He goes at 90%. So let's see the critics and user scores gave this film. So you have critics, a 30% with 71 of them in the user scores. An 82% with 700 and, or sorry, with 274 of them. Here's critic consensus. Like the sequels that preceded Rambo, Last Blood is content to indulge in bloody violence at the expense of its main character's once pognant story. 30 to 82. That's a 52% difference. Even though there's only 270 reviews, I bet you when this goes to 1,000 reviews, it's going to stay in the mid-70s upper. So that's 45% difference. I don't see the... I mean, there, if it goes up 71, there's usually 150 reviews. I can see it going more down. But think about that. A 50% difference between critics and user scores. Like, how are people not wondering, like, oh, wait a minute. Real reviews for real people. What I'm trying to do is just show people, like... It's a movie. It's a movie where there's bad guys and Rambo's trying to save his niece and hit her grandmother. I love the movie. I'm going to see it again with a bigger audience because, like I said, I'm in California. And I'll bet you, like I said, I'm going to be one of the only white people in the theaters. And it's still going to have the same reaction of, like, cheering and, like, yeah, these bad guys are dying. And it's great to see these bad guys die. But, like I said, do you agree with my 90? The 30 are the 82%. Chase, you like the Blue Futon. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think is Blue Futon Utopia, you Blue Futonians. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Now, I do think I'm going to start with my two news articles. It will be what critics get wrong with some of these reviews and rambles. Maybe one of them I'm going to digest into some of these reviews to see why these reviewers are saying what they are. And they're mostly white people, you know, trying to defend. It's a kind of like day and age of like woke girl broken. That's my second story of like white people need to defend people from Mexico or South America are needed to defend black people. It's like, why do white people need to defend that? If wh Why are we gaining their business? Are we saying that they're not competent enough? Because that's what I get from it. And that's what I get from Netflix's new Chelsea Handler bullshit thing. Cussing. Oh, well. Where her thing's like, going woke is no joke. I don't need to tell a rich white lady, but okay, I'm white too, to tell me what I should and shouldn't do. You're pr more privileged than what, 99% of the world out there? And you're telling me? So screw you. And then you have, like, Tiffany Haddish in the uh, thing. I know I'm kind of, like, digressing, but saying, like, oh, but the white people know their background and black people don't. That's not true. You think all the Irish people that came in the 1930s know their background? No, and they're white. Or, you know, for me, I mean, my mom's side from Hawaii, they're 100% Portuguese. Hawaii, Portugal, they're completely opposite sides of the earth. So maybe they, I don't know my background either. So... I don't know. Will I watch the Chesty Handler thing? Hell to the motherfucking no. But anyway, her thing is like, oh, getting woke is no joke. I don't. And then she went in. Anyway, that's another news story. I might do like a whole Tim Pool thing or Amazing Lucas thing. But anyway, thank you for watching and have a fantastic day. And see one of the movies because I heard all three of them this weekend are pretty good. As you can see, 82% for Rambo. Woo!